I'm just going to practice for a second. Mm. Not quite right, no. Mm. That's better, yeah. guitar back a little bit. I feel like I'm actually doing my job in here. What is this? In 1989, I was in the very first uh, Hard and Heavy, and when you know, one year later, 1990, here I am again. And uh, we're at a place called Granny's. We're in Reno, Nevada. Uh, looks a bit not like Reno, I guess, because of no slot machines, but this actually is a giant slot machine. Uh, this is where we gamble our future. Don, why don't you just start it for me from um, the beginning, if you would. the studio here for uh, just about four weeks. We plan on being here for six weeks. We'll be finishing in, uh, in about a week and a half, then uh, taking this product uh, to England to mix it. Uh, for those of you who don't know what mixing is, uh, we put all the pieces together when we mix it. We make it sound even better than it, than it started out with. We have all new players. We have a great young guitar player. Uh, we have uh, a drummer that we're using, that we've used on this album, that has been a friend of mine for a long, long time, uh, Simon Wright. Uh, he's the drummer with ACDC. Uh, Simon has really brought us back down to earth. We're playing a lot more uh, basic rock and roll. And uh, other faces, new bass player, Teddy Cook on bass, and Jens Johansson on keyboards. Rowan Robertson is our guitar player. Rowan joined us when he was 17 years old. He's now an old, old uh, codger of 18, and it shows, I think. Um, he's just a great player. He's the best I've ever worked with. changing all the people around, uh, we found that the writing even went, got stronger. It became more pleasant to do it because there were new ideas, ideas coming from places that, that, that we've used. The, there were too many cobwebs before. Uh, once you get stuck into doing it one way, you continue to do it for years and years and years. That's why the beauty of having these new people to do it with. Uh, we've written 12 songs for this LP. <laughs>
I got to be in the band by originally sending a tape from England, which my friend, you know, persuaded me to send. I didn't, didn't really want to send it because I figured, you know, I was only 17, well, 16 when I made the tape. And um, about six months later or something, Wendy just phoned me up one evening at 8 o'clock and asked me um, how I'd feel playing in front of 20,000 people. It sounds to me like you're living the American dream, doesn't it? More just any dream. I mean, fairy tale, really, what happened. It's unbelievable. If you give some time and um, devotion to something, and it's what you really, really want, it's however bad you want something, then I'm sure you can get it if you really want it. Uh, but the hard part and the grind of it is that year after year after year, you have to do the same thing. You have to write, you have to go in and record, and then tour. No time for a personal life. No time for anything but the single-mindedness of writing, recording, and touring. We have been, we've been talking about going straight to, to Britain and Europe to do uh, you know, two or three or four weeks, perhaps, of, of introduction, introductory playing there, and then coming back to America and doing uh, you know, our usual three to four months in America, and then going back to Europe and, uh, and Britain again and doing a full frontal assault. I'd just like to add to that that uh, you know if if it was at all possible, I would you know I will I will help uh, help along and be involved in this because the project has come along so far, you know. You won't be paid for this, by the way. Well, then, fuck off. <laughs>